So this tutorial is going to show you how to run ballots digitally. It's really easy with Google Forms. Um, there is a website tutorial for this that you can see right here, but I'm going to take you through the steps in this video. So the first step is you're going to open up an internet browser and you're going to go to forms.google.com and what we're going to do is click this plus sign to create a new form. So the first thing that you want to do so that you're going to be able to find it later is go ahead and title it and I'm going to call this one class officer ballot. Um, now the white box in the middle of the page is where we do most of our work. So when I click down here if you notice it automatically takes this title from up here and is going to put it down here. Um, now, if you're not a fan of purple, you can click up here on the color palette and you can change it to another color. Um, you can also choose um, different themes if you want to change it to a different theme. Um, the next thing that you're going to look at is the form description box. You don't have to type anything there, but it's a good place to add instructions if you think that they're necessary. So the next step is actually adding questions. Um, there are a couple of different types of questions that you might want to have on a ballot. Um, those are multiple choice, check boxes, and drop down. So with multiple choice, um, that's great if you only want one option. Um, you can still allow write-ins, but multiple choice, you're restricted to one option. Check boxes are useful if you want to allow people to choose two or more candidates. Um, drop downs are available, but I suggest you use multiple choice instead because on some phones and mobile devices, drop downs are a little bit difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a multiple choice question and on our sample ballot we are going to type in class president and we're going to add a couple of options, George Washington, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. So over here at the right, um, this is where we can add new items to the form. Um, this plus sign is where we can add a question. The TT is an option to add text. This is how we add an image. This one adds a video and this one is going to create a new section. Um, looking down at the bottom, this duplicates a question. The trash can deletes the question. This toggle switch makes the question required. And these three dots allow us to add different options to the questions. So I've added my class president question, so I'm going to click to add another question and this time I'm going to add a checkbox question. So on this one I want people to choose two options. Um, so I'm going to add in George Washington again, James Madison, William Jackson, and Robert Yates. So now when people vote here they can click on more than one box um, to add in different options. If you're creating your ballot and you realize that you've accidentally gotten questions out of order, if you look you have these little six dots in a grid. I can click on those and rearrange the questions um, so that's something that you want to keep in mind. All right, step four is to prepare for respondents. Um, this is the part that you want to make sure that you have set up correctly. So we're going to go up to the top of the screen to this little cog wheel right there. We're going to click on that. Now your screen might look a little bit different than mine based on whether or not you are using a um, organization account. Um, what these different things mean, for example right here, collect email addresses. If I'm doing a confidential ballot, I'm not going to collect email addresses. 
If I'm doing something with my students, I usually do collect email addresses so that I can keep track of who's actually participating. Um, if I want to require a sign-in, even if I don't collect email addresses, to make sure that it's only people within my organization, I'll click that box. Um, limit to one response. I click this if I don't want people to be able to vote multiple times. Down at the bottom, respondents can edit after submit. Um, do not check this unless you want people to be able to go back and change their answers. And then the last box, summary charts and text responses, you would only click this if you want people to be able to see the results before you have closed the polling. So now we have it set up, we're ready to go, we're ready to start collecting responses. There are two ways that we can share this. I can post it in Google Classroom or I can click on the send button. So when I click on the send button, um, I have several different options. I can send it as an email, I can get a link, I can embed it in a website or I can share it on Google Plus, Facebook or Twitter. The easiest to do is to do the link. And once you do that, then you just have to watch the results roll in. So this is a sample of a poll that I did with my students earlier today. Um, they were voting for um, novel superlatives from the novels that we've read this year. So you can see there's a timestamp. I didn't collect their email addresses, but I've got all of their different votes here. And the nice thing about Google is you can teach it to tally the results for you. So I don't have to go in and count all these different votes. The computer counts it for me. So that's your election tutorial. If you have any additional questions, you can contact me. I'm at North Hopkins. You can email me. Um, my address is in the global or it's mickey.clark at hopkins.kyschools.us.